particles, um, you know, you have a photon um, that's absorbed and it can be absorbed as long as that photon has the same energy as, a, as one of those states. So in other words, um, you know, it has to, the photon that's absorbed has to be exactly the amount of energy level contained in the photon um, as it goes up. And so it's only allowed at those very specific levels. And so let's take a look at an example here. Let's say that we have, you know, a, uh, a photon that's coming in. And um, let's say that that corresponds to exactly how many electron volts this is. So let's say it's at the ground state, which is negative 10. And let's say this photon has 10 electron volts of energy. What will happen is as this atom receives it and as this electron is here, what's going to happen is it's going to go up to this excited state up here, um, you know, wherever that, uh, that might be. Now the ionization level is up here. So let's say, you know, um, in this case here, this actually is, is absorbed and then goes to that zero level, right? Um, it's 10 electron volts, it'll go all the way up to zero. If this photon was actually only like, so let's say seven electron volts, it's possible this electron might only go up to here to here because this would be negative three electron volts here. This is 10, the difference is seven. So if this is a seven electron volt uh, photon, it'll jump from here to seven or let's say it's only a five electron volt one, right? And so let's say this is uh, negative five here. It'll jump from the negative 10 to negative five because this photon is, uh, you know, five electron volts. All right, so if we, uh, let's say that we had some ga uh, hydrogen gas here and we uh, sent white light through hydrogen, the hydrogen gas and light uh, that was not absorbed went through. And then we had a spectrometer which spread the light out where we could see all the different wavelengths of light. Um, what would happen? Well, this gas is going to absorb all the light that it possibly can that matches the energy level transitions that are possible. So most of the light is gonna pass straight through because it's not gonna match what the energy level changes can be. Um, but the ones that do match for the hydrogen gas where the electrons can go from lower energy to higher energy levels are going to be absorbed. And so what's going to happen is uh, the rest of that light is going to pass through and we're going to see something like this. It's called the absorption spectrum. Um, most of the light makes it through, as you can see here, but then there's these dark bands. Here's one, here's another one, here's another one. And this represents the energy levels that are um, inside that atom. And so the transitions between, you know, one energy and level and the other. And so it removes the light that, you know, matches those energy levels and then the rest of the light passes through. This is called the absorption spectrum because it's a spectrum. It's showing you, you know, the light across uh, here, but um, it's absorbing, right? Certain photons of light and as it absorbs it, um, you know, the electrons go to higher energy levels. Now you might ask, okay, well, I know it's going to go to a higher energy level. What happens when it goes back down? When it goes back down, it'll emit light, but in random directions. And so if you're on the other side of that, uh, you know, the picture that I just showed you, you know, you're not necessarily going to get those other photons, right? You're going to just get that direct beam of that white light that passes through, except the ones that are absorbed there. So, in other words, you know, some of that light may represent, an, um, you know, an electron being able to jump up from here to here, right? So a, pho a blue photon that comes in could correspond to that. Whereas if an electron's here and then jumps up to here, that could be a, a green photon and so on. So um, they always, uh, you know, with the absorption, match those very specific energy levels. Okay, so... Um, and we see that here now with the, with the full picture, you know, white light is passing through the hydrogen gas, absorbs these very specific wavelengths of light, and the rest of the transmittal light goes through, goes through a spectrometer, which spreads the light out, and then we can see it all here. All right, so let's go ahead and, and continue to apply this here. An atom absorbs 550 nanometers a nanometer photon of light, what jump did the electron in the atom make as a result? And then we want this in electron volts. And so 
yeah, so let's go ahead and give this a try, and um, I'll uh, go ahead and pause, or go ahead and pause the clip, and then when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. Okay, so if an atom absorbs a 550 nanometer photon of light, we've got to know what's going on with that energy because that corresponds to very specific energy level change, right? So E equals HF, um, we know the uh, wavelength here, so we can find the frequency. Now that we know the frequency, we can find the energy of that. We can convert to electron volts. So um, this photon corresponds to a 2.2557 electron volt uh, photon. Therefore, the um, absorption of that corresponds to that very specific uh, jump there in that atom. Um, now, when a photon of light is emitted by an atom, it causes uh, the decrease in energy of the atom. So the atom itself loses energy as it shoots a photon out, and that photon of light is created and sent out. And then the energy of the atom um, decreases by exactly the amount of the energy contained in the photon that is emitted. So again, um, you know, the very specific levels there. This is called relaxation. The photon can be emitted only if it can produce an allowed energy decrease, right? So um, only if the electron um, you know, goes up, or I'm sorry, goes down from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, the photon will shoot out, and then the absorption is the reverse, right? It'll only absorb it if it's a very specific energy level change. So if we were to visualize that, let's say that we had an, an electron and it's in an excited state, and it drops down, right? So it goes down a specific energy drop here from a certain level. So as that happens, a photon of light is created, and we can figure out exactly how much energy this has because um, you know it's the drop from here to here, whatever that is. And so let's say the drop from here to here is eight electron volts. Um, you know it's going from the negative two electron volt to the negative ten. So if that's true, um, this photon would have eight electron volts of energy, and then you could place that in here, and then figure out what the frequency is of that photon that shoots out. So what happens with a photon uh, or with a uh, emission spectrum, we need a system where we can spread the light out similar to a prism um, and we can use a diffraction grating which um, uses interference to be able to spread the light out and um, you know actually be able to see the whole spectrum of light. So if we were to look at a fluorescent tube with uh, diffraction gratings, we can look up at it and it'll spread the light out and we can see the light spread out in those very specific levels and actually, you know, see that it's uh, a ceiling light, a fluorescent light. And so what happens is when you excite, um, you know, a, a gas, it's going to, you know, you put some voltage on it, you heat it up, those electrons are going to jump to higher energy levels and as they do, um, they're going to come back down and then shoot out photons of light. And again, they, the only photons they can shoot out correspond to those very specific energy levels. And so, um, you know, and this is called the emission spectrum where for this gas, and this is the same one that we're looking at, um, you know, you have these different ones here. You have this light, this light, this light, and this light. This corresponds to those very specific energy levels that, um, you know, where the light shoots out. And so if you, you know, were to visualize it here, you know, this, the electrons are going from higher energy levels to these lower energy levels. And as they do, there's very specific levels that they can drop and shoot the photons out. So what happens is if we take a gas like hydrogen here and we put some voltage on it, it's going to emit light all sorts of directions. And when we, when we see that, we're just going to see, you know, a, a glow of light. If we have a spectrometer, which can spread the light out, we'll see these very specific bands that we see down here, down below. And, um, when we do that, um, we can know, oh, yeah, this is hydrogen. Or if we have a different, different lines of colors, um, different um, showing different photons of light, you know, that can represent um, other photons that uh, are coming from the atoms. So um, this one's H6. We're going to, uh, on this one, look at the frequency wavelength of light that will cause this atom to transition from the ground state to the first excited state. And so, in other words, if the electron is at the ground state and we want to get to the first excited state, 
um, what kind of photon is going to have to come in here to do that so um, yeah so go ahead and pause the clip and see if you can do that and when you're ready to check you can hit play to continue okay so um, that transition would be six electron volts you're going from negative uh, 11.5 to negative 5.5 and when that happens um, and we, again, we can convert from um, our electron volt seconds to um, joules and then get our uh, Planck's constant. Um, so yeah, so that's the frequency of this light um, that it's gonna, going to um, you know, take to do that, 1.44 times 10 to the 15th hertz. And we can find the wavelength of that, which is 207 nanometers. So a 207 nanometer photon's got to come in um, and then the electron can go from the ground state to the first excited state. Let's say it was 206 or 208. It wouldn't work. The photon would just pass straight through because it has to be that very specific um, value for it to be absorbed. What's the longest wavelength of light that when absorbed will cause the atom uh, shown to ionize from the ground state? So in other words, if you have a electron here what's the minimum energy photon that's going to take for it to get to zero electron volts and so um yeah so the transition would be what kind of photon would need to come in well you subtract it to you would need an 11.5 electron volt photon to come in to make an ionize and so go ahead and pause the clip and uh, calculate this one out and then when you're ready to check you can hit play to continue okay so that transition again is uh, 11.5 electron volts and um, we can get the wavelength to be 108. So that would make it uh